building strong financial futures, one family, one street, one city at a time. Since 1868, visit Busey.com to learn more. Busey. He's going to take it himself for a championship. Oh. A double play and wins it. Three. Turn it to the end zone. What a catch. The guy is on touchdown.
And now let's meet the home team, the Crusaders from Brother Rice. Entering this game with a record of 25 wins and 15 losses. Here's the head coach of Brother Rice, Sean McBride. Coach McBride with a career record of 115 wins and 45 losses over four years. And now the assistant coaches for Brother Rice, William Cobb. Anthony Lococo. And Tim O'Connell. And now let's meet the Crusaders. Number one, Lance Moon. Number two, Jason Mollicky. Number four, Nolan Navarrete. Number eight, Jack Gilmartin. Number 10, Connor Lyons. Number 11, Brendan Arnold. Number 15, Danny Durkin. Number 20, Matt Spell. Number 22, Aiden O'Hara. Number 25, Danny Sheehan. Number 27, Casey Gimsick. Number 30, Ty Callaghan. Number 31, Connor Stack. Number 32, Josh Sutter. Number 33, Trent Guzik. And number 34, Danny Grannis. And now the starting lineup for Brother Rice. Leading off the right fielder, number 19, Bryce Nevels. Batting second, the second baseman, number 13, Jackson Natanik. Batting third, the first baseman, number 23, Amir Gray. Batting cleanup, the catcher, number 21, Randall Novin. Batting fifth, the shortstop, number 16, Gavin Treisenberg. Batting sixth, the left fielder, number 29, Chris Doherty. Batting seventh, the third baseman, number nine, Aiden Nohaba. Batting eighth, the center fielder, number 14, Ryan Hartz. Batting ninth, the designated hitter, number six, Sean Sullivan. And the starting pitcher, number 28, Cole Van Assen. Good luck, gentlemen. Let's play ball. Your umpires for this game behind the plate. It's our final semifinal game of the day, and it comes in Class A, and this one will match the new Trier Trevians and the Brother Rice Crusaders. The winner to move on to the state championship ball game to take on defending champ Edwardsville. Hi again, everybody. Dave Bernhardt along with Hall of Fame coach Mark Lindo, new Trier coming in 29 and 7, Brother Rice at 25 and 15. And Mark, when he took a new take a look at New Trier, Mike Napoleon, the head coach, almost a thousand wins. I say that not facetiously, 966. On the other side, he's taking on Sean McBride, 115 wins. Brother Rice, a team so very young, even though they were here last year surprising people by getting back this year. They certainly did, Dave. Good evening to you. Yeah, you would think that a uh, team that only returned, what, three players from last year's team, that they wouldn't be able to return, but they had other thoughts. They caught fire at the end here, as did Nutrier. 
Mike Napoleon, he's been around for a long time, no doubt about that. Been through the been through the war. Sean McBride brought his team last year as a trophy. And once they got here, they have bigger aspirations right now to get to the championship game tomorrow night that eluded them last week last year. Nutrier 29 and 7. Here's their batting order. Aiden Nolan, Ben Toft, and Grand Mastros. The top three in the middle part of the order begins with right fielder Brendan Stressler, the DH Dylan Mayer, hitting for pitcher Max Kaplan, and then shortstop James Novakovic. Trey Myers, Evan Olesker, and Henry Wolf round out the batting order. Defensively, four brother Rice, Chris Doherty, Ryan Hartz, Rice Nevels in the outfield, the Ernfield of Aiden Nevada, Nahava, Gavin Treesenberg, Jackson Natanik, and Amir Gray behind the plate, Randall Naughton, and on the mound, the ace, Cole Van Assen. Hey, looking forward to seeing his abilities out on the hill. He's 6'4", 200 pound and chiseled, 9-4 and four on the season, 71 innings pitched, 1.97 earned average. He struck out 81 and walked 15. And for the first pitch of our second semifinal and four, here's the Hall of Fame voice of the IHSA, Dave Bernhard. Thank you very much, Mark. Pitch number one is a called strike. Home plate umpire in this one, John Sear. Paul Pack. Holfer is at first base, and D. Ray Tucker, the third base umpire. Van Assen quickly with his second pitch misses, one and one. Purdue signee, he'll tip 90 on the night, six foot four. He's going to get stronger and stronger, the Purdue recruit, as his career goes on. But tonight we get a chance to see him at a high, as a high school senior trying to catapult his team into the championship. Aiden Nolan at the plate, leadoff hitter, hitting 281 in the season. Checks it up. Call strike three. Van Assen strikeout number one. It's interesting when you look at Cole Van Assen. 25 career victories. He did not pitch last year in the finals despite Brother Rice finishing third. And the reason, because of pitch count rules, he could not, could not pitch because Brother Rice had to play their super sectional on a Tuesday. So he's looking to make the most of his opportunity here and he'll be facing sophomore Ben Toff. Six foot four frame, he is a good job long arming the baseball, really creates some arm speed from the slot. He delivers the baseball in free and easy. Toft a 288 hitter this season. Three doubles, two triples, and four home runs hitting out of the number two spot. Van Asen will throw a curveball, a change, and yes, he'll even mix in a cutter at times. This one is foul, it should reach the stands, and it does, and it's the brother Rice side the field on the third base side. Big crowd for Brother Rice. And on the other side, Nutrier, a healthy following as well. A lot of the Nutrier fans have spread from behind the first base dugout, more behind home plate. Absolutely great night for baseball. Temperatures are hitting 80 degrees. Toft with the swing and miss, two and two. That was a straight change. Probably took eight or nine miles off that fast, off the fastball with that change. Got Toff way out in front. And number two called strike three. And that was a cutter. That bun just barely caught the edge as it broke really late. Stayed on the same plane, but changed horizontally and just froze the batter Toft. Now bring up the number three hitter, third baseman Graham Mastros. Mastros, 6'3", 225-pound senior. It scored 36 runs this year on a 380 batting average. Conference Player of the Year. He'll play at St. Louis University as his college choice. And Essen dealing here early. He's getting it and throwing it. Boy, his changeup. He's thrown two outstanding changeups both times, getting hitters way out on their front foot. Chopper foul. And Asin working very quickly with rhythm, with tempo. Keeping his defense sharp. Str- throwing three different pitches already. Fastball, curveball, change. Three strikeouts, all looking. And that's it for Nutrier in the first inning. Cole Van Asin dominating after one half inning of play will go to the bottom. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors.
the Rice with 15 losses this year to go along with 25 wins. Here's their batting order. Bryce Nevels, right fielder to lead it off. Jackson Natanik hits second. Amir Gray, a power hitting first base in the third spot. Randall Naughton behind the plate, followed by Gavin Treisenberg, the shortstop and left fielder Chris Doherty. Third baseman Aiden Ohava bats seventh. The eighth hitter Ryan Hartz and Sean Sullivan, the DH, batting for Van Assen. We'll get you the defensive lineup right after this first pitch. We'll tell you Max Kaplan is on the mound. Get you those numbers in just a second. Nevels puts it down. It's a beauty. But the great play from Henry Wolf. I didn't think he had a chance. That was a superlative play. Like a cat. Quick. Henry Wolf came out of the box. The catcher's box, about 10, 12 feet in front of home plate, had to clear the running of Nevels and threw just a seed to Trey Myers on a bang, bang, first out play on a drag bunt. I'll bring up Jackson Titanic. Titanic, 5'9", sophomore, and I promise you we'll get those defensive, that defensive lineup here after this pitch. Or maybe after another pitch. Fly ball right field. Brendan Stressler underneath it. Trouble with the sun. Stays with it and makes the catch. All right, here's your defense. Four new trier, Ben Toft in left, Aiden Nolan in center, Brennan Stressler in right, the left side of the infield, Graham Mastros and James Novakovic. Evan Olesker and Trey Myers on the right side. Henry Wolf just made that great play moments ago. Behind the plate, Max Kaplan doing the pitching. Kaplan is eight and one with a 1.23 earned run average of 57 innings pitched. Struck out 56 and walked just 10 for the 6'1 junior. Really nice numbers. Amir Gray looks at strike two. Gray with 11 doubles this year, 345 batting average. And we'll send him down to first base in a hurry. He had a home run in the super section on a big one it was. A win over Lincoln Way East. Randall Naughton hits out of the cleanup spot. Football player for the Crusaders. A couple of home runs in the regional championship win over Mount Carmel. Amir Gray on first base. He is a threat to steal. He's got an amazing 54 runs accounted for this year between RBIs and runs scored. So you've already been able to tell the interesting contrast we'll have in pitchers tonight, not in just terms of right-handed, left-handed, but the way they work. Van Essen, power pitcher, Kaplan, crafty. Nodden, straightaway center field. Nolan is there, takes a long time to come down. But that will close out the first inning. Just a walk, that's it. One in the books, we'll go to the second. Hey, I need you. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Head coach Mike Napoleon making his way down to that third base coaching box. 26th year at Nutrier. He's won 708 games at Nutrier. You say, man, what a great career that is. But how about this? Earlier this year, Mike Napoleon, career, one is record breaking win, and that sets him number one in the state of Illinois all time victories. He's now up to 966 wins in his 37th season as a head coach. Private previously at Niles Notre Dame, Providence Catholic, and then the last many years at New Trier. And his first batter in this inning to left field as Brendan Strussler will fly out to Chris Doherty. Yeah, 
Coach Napoleon, one of the all-time greats, Hall of Famer in 2000. Coached football as well. Had a chance to coach his sons, Dusty and Dylan. Also had a stop and sneaked in there, Danville Schlarman. So well-traveled he is, but awful lot of victories going way back since 1984-85 season. 966 wins, not really committal about how much longer he's going to coach, but he says he is aware that 1,000 victories is only 34 wins away. Championships in 2000 and 2009 as well. Cole Van Assen on the mound facing the DH, Dylan Mayer. Mayer batting for Max Kaplan. Brother Rice student section right behind the dugout along the third baseline. And two pitches bounced in. You know, in addition to all those numbers we gave you, Mike Napoleon has coached over 20 years with the Wilmette Waves summer team. That is a lot of baseball. And he's been around the diamond a bit, huh? Mm. Also serves as offensive coordinator yes. in football. And that just missed. So 0-2 oh, to 3-2. He was at Providence and had a chance to take over for Ron Klein, the fine coach at New Trier. Got that opportunity, took it, and the rest, they say, is history. Rounder to the left side. That's a fair ball. Long through across. Amir Gray comes up then on the throw from Aiden Nohava. Really good scoop by Amir Gray. And Nohava, you wonder if he did one pop that ball on purpose. That's the best way he had a chance to get it across the diamond. Trust his first baseman, Amir Gray, the Purdue recruit. Nice 5 3 put out. Bring up left hand hitting James Novakovic. He's the shortstop for the Trevians. 6 1 junior. Five up, five retired by Van Assen. Took a little off that one. Novakovic way ahead of it. We do not have a speed clock here anywhere. We are at Dooley Health and Care Field in Joliet. State tournament hosted here for many, many years. And now split the classes up, 1A and 2A in Peoria, and 3 and 4 here in Joliet. We used to play everything here, one of many sites throughout the history of IHSA baseball. You know, you go back, and this is way back, played in Peoria, Springfield, Kane County. Yep. As we just said, Peoria and here in Joliet. I'm trying to think back. Not that I would know any farther back. <laughs> Line drive center field's gonna hang up there for Ryan Hart. Six up, six down. Cole Van Assen has it going. Scoreless going to the bottom of the second. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Talked about New Trier head coach Sean McBride's the head coach for Brother Rice. In his fourth season, 115 wins, 45 defeats. Last year, he finished third. And leading it off will be Gavin Treisenberg for the Crusaders. McBride Sandberg High School grad, St. Joseph College, and 2019 Summer League Coach of the Year. Alesker gobbles it up and over to Trey Myers, one gun. Next 
McBride so proud of this year's crew. He had a veteran team last year that finished third, and nothing was really expected. Brother Rice this year, they just kept digging away, a young team. And here they are playing on second to last day of the high school baseball season. Chris Doherty at the plate for Brother Rice. Brother Rice tradition goes way back into the 70s. George Sedlicek took a team to that when it was in Springfield. Quickly 0-2 on Doherty. Batter ready, pitcher ready, let's go. Here it is. Fouled away. Kaplan, uh, his, Kaplan, his windup is so compact, short, sweet. Just missed. You know, so many pitchers we've seen here like to work quickly. This one's line foul just out of the reach of Trey Myers. And when I say that, I mean, you really haven't seen, there's not a lot of pitchers that now walk off the back right. of the mound. They just get it, walk back to the rubber, and off they go. You talk about pace of play, you can see the hitters ready to hit as well. We have Chase, a, chasing this yeah. ball down in the corner. Yeah, we're delay as the ball went all the way down the right field line. Up to three and two now. Straight change there, just didn't command it, kept it down where he would have wanted. Now he'll just challenge with a fastball. And he'll miss. Second walk of this game by Max Kaplan. Comes with one out in the bottom of the second. I'll bring up Aiden Nohava. Six foot sophomore. Sub 200 batting average. He has Ryan Hartz batting behind him. This is on first pitch. Brother Rice had to rally to beat Lincoln Way East in the super sectional 5-4 victory. We're down 4-1 to one in that game. Token toss over to first. Four-one deficit came in the fifth inning. It was a Randall nod and walk off. One ball, one strike, one out. Gotta believe Kaplan's got a better one than that. He's shown two moves, neither one would be a high leg kick to freeze the runner. Big cut from Aiden Nahava. He's had two good swings, but just overmatched by Kaplan on both of those passes of the baseball. And that one away from him. The count two and two. Ooh. Ooh. That was sizzling into the stands. I don't know if that got a piece of somebody over there or not. If it did, they just shrugged it off. No protective netting down the lines in a minor league ballpark like it. The rule is enforced in Major League Parks. One of the best things I think Major League Parks did, quite honestly. Don't agree with everything from MLB, but that's a good one. Protection of the fans. You know, I wondered that, and mainly for visibility purposes. Here's the pitch right there on the inside corner. Nohava goes down looking. That's the first strike out of the game for Kaplan. But that, that, that was a Picasso pitch right on the edge. He painted him. Absolutely froze Nohava. That brings up Ryan Hartz. But when you steer behind those screens in Major League Parks, you forget they're there. Yeah. Two outs to Hearts. First pitch of ball. Ryan, 6'1", junior. Yep, this lineup loaded with juniors, sophomores. Paying a lot of attention to Chris Doherty over at first base. Well, that's the best move the Kaplan has used and Doherty read it easily anyway. So still now he can extend. Still not sure it's his best. 
little quicker to home plate on that one. He mixed in the slide step after the leg before. Good use of mixing up, disrupting timing of the runner on first, Doherty. But all the runners that are scoping things out and scouting out things in the Brother Rice dugout. Took something off of that one. He loves that changeup. He does. He, he's probably thrown it six times already. It's called strike two. Hart's number eight hitter in the lineup, center fielder for the Brother Rice Crusaders. Long look at first. This one's hit hard to left. Will it hang up? It does and more over the head of Ben Toff. Doherty with two outs running. He chugs home, looking for a triple. Not to be, but the run will count. Doherty crossed home plate before Hart's tagged out at third. And just like that, almost out of nowhere, Brother Rice takes a one to nothing lead as we head to the third. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Colvin Assen stake to a one to nothing lead as we go to the top of the third inning. He's retired the first six batters he has faced. Number seven here is Trey Myers, followed by Evan Olesker and Henry Wolf. Another one of the good looking sophomores and underclassmen we've seen from both these teams, but all day long. Myers, a first baseman, sophomore, 6'6, 195. How about that to grow into a body? plays football, basketball, and baseball already at Brother Rice has made his athletic prowess impactful. Ten doubles, second on the team in that category. He's in there ready to hit. Van Assen ready to pitch. Van Assen gets him. And that is the fourth strike out of this game here in the first out of the third inning. And Van Assen using a change up to his liking as well. Both these pitchers utilizing one of the pitchers you and I like best, the straight change. Evan Olesker will take his shot at it. Olesker had both runs batted in in the super sectional win. That came against Stevenson, a two to nothing ball game. That took place at Wintrust Field in Schaumburg. Nutrier defeated Glenbrook North in nine innings in the first game of the sectional, then defeated Evanston 11 0 in a sectional championship ball game. And that's after Evanston had beaten Nutrier twice for the conference title in the regular season. One and two to Olesker. Yeah, we talked to Brendan Stressler about that. He said, Yeah, we knew we could get him, but we also knew they had not seen Max Kaplan <laughs> makes a big difference when you go into that game against Evanston with your king of the hill on the, on the bump. This strike out of the game, the fourth called strike. Boy, and that tells you that Van Assen is bringing something here that Nutrier's just not picking up. Well, I'll tell you what, again, we've, we've said in the past, hitting's all about timing, pitching about disrupting timing, and his 
repertoire of changing speeds has been tremendous. He'll run it up there 88, 89 miles an hour, then take about 10 off on a changeup, then he'll cut the ball. He has a complete package, and he's got command of all of them right now. Henry Wolf at the plate, the number nine hitter for the Trevians. One ball, one strike, one out to Wolf. And misses up just a bit. And misses up and in. Seven and a half seconds from the time <laughs> the ball came back for the catcher to the time that he pitched the baseball. That's the kind of rhythm he is trying to get into right now. Get it, get your sign, pitch it, and get some rhythm and tempo going. One well, time Van Assen took the throw back from Nodden, walked off the mound, stepped back on, and he's gotten it to a three and two count. Strikeout number six. Striking out the side in first and third innings. Nine up, nine down for Nutrier. Brother Rice coming to bat with a one-run lead in the bottom of the third. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Along with Mark Lindo, I'm Dave Bernhard. We speed our way into the bottom of the third inning. Brother Rice scoring a run with two outs last inning. Number nine hitter Sean Sullivan, the DH, batting for Cole Van Assen to lead things off. Sullivan, a senior, 319 average, hitting out of that ninth spot. Max Kaplan working just as fast. Just passed him on the mound. Backhand, Olesker, throw to first, gets him. Nifty play from second baseman, Evan Olesker. We have seen some defense here in Joliet this weekend. I think uh, Max Kaplan could not believe it when, when he didn't catch that ball back at him. Bryce Nevels, first pitch he saw Bunn, and it was a great play from Henry Wolf, the catcher, to deny him. He's going to go after the first one. Novakovic up quickly. He has to get it over there in a hurry. He does. Just like that, two outs in the third. Boy, can Nevels get up the line. No doubt about that. He put it into overdrive, but showing off a nice arm with Novakovic for the strike across the diamond against that speedy leadoff hitter. Jackson Natanik at the plate with two outs. Flew out to right field his first time up against Kaplan. Hard hit, base hit. Second hit of the game for the Crusaders. Comes with two outs in the third. Took that ball in the outer part, dropped the head of the bat, just pushed it over the right side past Evan Olesker. With Aiden Gray up right now, honestly, you gotta move your defense back if you're in your because you cannot let an extra base hit score a run with two outs. You got to make them pound back to back base hits. Amir Gray, six foot, 200 pounder. So proud of this team this year. 
Amir Gray, a starter on last year's third place team for Brother Rice, and he said, this is so much better. This is so much better than last year because nobody expects us to be here. We asked him about his approach to hitting. He kind of simplified things. He said, see the ball, hit the ball. If you have the talent and tools he does, that's a good approach. No, and you, you tried to get him to break it down a little <laughs> bit more. I think he just said, please don't, comp you know, don't complicate <laughs> it for me. <laughs> Very nice young man. Be a boilermaker next year. He along with his teammate, Van Assen. There was Kaplan's better move. Front leg came forward a little bit. Trey Myers having to fight the sun, receiving that throw at first mm. base. You know, as a first baseman, I would, I would tell my pitchers, in a situation like this, I don't want it. Yep. I, I, unless this is a real big lead, I don't want it. Gray on 3-0 and will take. He walked his first time up. They do not want Amir Gray to beat them. You can see by the cut right there, why not? The lights came on last inning, by the way, and we have catcher's interference. All right, that will send Gray down to first. Henry Wolf called for that. A little bit of a break right there for Brother Rice. And Henry Wolf goes out there, probably tells his pitcher, regroup, put that one on me. I'll pick you up here. Randall Nodden, the game winner in the super sectional win over Lincoln Way East. Had to wait on this one to left field. And Toft is there. A single catcher's interference call. Brother Rice will leave two on base. Yes, the Crusaders, one to nothing hey, man, after three. Tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. <laughs> my kid heard that solo. You say it like this? Yeah, Come yeah. on. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store and Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Mark Lindo, we are in the middle innings right now. Fourth inning already. Nine up, nine down. Retired by Cole Van Essen. He is flat out dealing. Get in it, pitching it, pounding the zone, not messing around at all, just in attack mode. Six of the nine outs have come by way of strikeouts for the called variety. Aiden Nolan, the leadoff hitter for the Trevians. Count even at one and one. Mature players throughout this tournament, they did it again last night, and had a bonfire the night before each and every playoff game where they get together, sit around, and just talk baseball and bond. Really a cool thing. and. Probably tradition, I bet you, that the new true Trevians keep from years to come. Well, it certainly has worked this year. First time in a state finals since 2017. And Trier had a run going. Well, let's just start it back 1997 with Mike Napoleon. 97, 99, 2000, a little gap, 2007, 9, 17, and 23. Charging hard from third base, we get a quick throw. In time is Aiden Nohava. 
What a fine run through play by Nohava. Toff struck out looking his first time. Ben Toff, the sophomore left fielder. Just missed outside. Forty third pitch thrown by Cole Van Assen, and we are in the fourth inning with six strikeouts. Goes right at Toff, misses up just a bit. One of the few times Van Assen's been behind in the count tonight. Down three and one. The Trevians looking for their first base runner and get him into the stretch. And there it is. Ten straight retired by Cole Van Assen to start the game. And we'll see what type of an adjustment that will be for Van Assen. The Trevians lost three of their final four regular season games. So you go, you go down into the tournament on a little bit of a downer, but boy, you're right the ship and. Sent it all the way to two, two wins regional, two sectional, and the super sectional win, and here they are. More so than any team sport, your season can end in a hurry in baseball. Seven innings go very quickly. We have several teams here. In fact, Edwardsville playing the state championship game tomorrow, looking to go back to back their first three games. Tigers had to come from behind any one of those. Could have resulted in elimination from the tournament had they not been able to pull it off. Graham Mastros, he was a strikeout victim in the first inning. Mastros, the team MVP. Van Essen, now 2 0. He'll take that long walk off the mound. Yeah, down the stretch. Trevians lost to Loyola, Maine South, and Mundelein before, as you had already given us information, basically cruising through the tournament for the most part. Three balls and no strikes. After walking Ben Toff, strike zone jumping around a little bit on Mastros. A little bit different arm slot, a little bit different landing point, a little bit every, little, everything between the windup and the stretch. Four pitch walk. <laughs> Tying run in scoring position in the form of Toft at second base, Mastro's down at first. And Brendan Stressler. He's the first batter in this game against Cole Van Assen to put the ball in play. Thought we might see a mound visit. Brother Rice dugout sitting tight. Probably taking all the way on that one. Strike one to Stressler. 11 doubles, two triples, five home runs to go along with the team leading. 38 runs batted in for Brendan Stressler. Yeah, one of those home runs was a walk off in the sectional. Said it was surreal, a dream that he had just a couple years ago, and it took a couple years to fulfill that dream. Stressler stepping out to try to disrupt the rhythm of Van Assen. Takes a big cut at this one. In that sectional championship game with the walk-off also had a couple of doubles. Five RBIs. RBI situation here. Looking for the hole. Knocked down grab. Natanik makes the play. Nice play by Jackson Natanik, the runners will advance on the ground out. Natanik ranging far to his left, laid out with his glove down and made the only play he had a chance to. He had no chance to go to second base, saved a run at least for now, got the out at the same time. Now Dylan Mayer, a chance for the lead.
Mayer puts the ball in play, 372 batting average. To third, gobbled up there by Nohava. And Brother Rice gets out of the inning. Mitrier leaves two runners on base in scoring position. They get their first runners of the game. Neither one can cross the plate. Halfway home in your Class 4A semifinal finds Brother Rice on top of Nutrier, one to nothing. Tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? <gasps> the conductor only plays his favorite. <laughs> my kid heard that solo. You say it like it? Yeah, Come on. Both teams hustling it up between innings. We're ready to play. First pitch to Gavin Treesenberg here in the bottom of the fourth inning is fouled off. I was all set to give you scores from earlier today, but these guys are ready to play. I'll give it to you right now. Braves Lake Central knocked off Effingham 9-1 to in our first Class 3A semifinal. The pitch from Kaplan swung on and missed. So Braves Lake Central heads to the championship game. They'll take on the defending 3A champ, Nazareth Academy, shutting out Sycamore today 3-0. The to first 4A game, Edwardsville. A 7-3 win. Led 7-1 going into the seventh inning. Uh, York. And the tying run at the plate. This ball is grounded to short, and did he get a tag? No. The throw from Novakovic to Myers pulled Myers off the bag. Novakovic had to range far to his right, had to feel that ball with his backhand. A very long throw, dropped down just a bit, pulled his first base from Myers off the base and eluding the tag. It would go as an infield hit, I would assume. Oh, they gave him an error, throwing error. Oh, my goodness, that's a tough error. Chris Doherty walked, scored the only run of the game in the second inning. Doherty hitting out of the sixth spot in the batting order. No sign of any bunts here. On deck is Nohava. Doherty up the middle. Knocked down a Lesker. Can't get the force at second. And Brother Rice has something going here with nobody out in the fourth. Back to back errors, and there is no doubt that that was the prototype. You've heard it before, where he tried to make the next play before he finished the first place. Shortstop Novakovic because he knew he had the force out at second, but he was trying to already think double play. As he came across the base, he did not look the ball in, and a couple errors have set the table for Brother Rice to create some separation on this would-be bunt situation. We have a pinch hitter at the plate. Let me get a glance at his number. Jason Policki. He is up in the front of the box, showing bunt all the way. And that's what he's there to do. A little bit foul. Number two, Jason Policki is pinch hitting for Brother Rice. Jason Policki, the younger brother of a player for Brother Rice who played right on this field last year, Bo Policki. And Jason's job, look at him, moving way up in the box, showing bunt early, really smart, fundamentally getting ready to play. He knows he has one job to do in this game, and that's to get a bunt down. Wheel plays on. So Kaplan was waiting. The 
Timing wasn't right. Mike Napoleon wants to clear this one up. Yeah, too big a situation. Really good defensive timeout by Mike Napoleon. And what he has to do on this timeout, you mentioned to clean this one up because there was a breakdown. But so they're going to have a defensive play on on this pitch. But let's assume just for fun, Pollocky doesn't get it done on this pitch. They have to be ready to change defenses on the next pitch and the pitch after because Pollock, you get a chance to see what the defense is doing. Is the wheel play on? Is the first baseman charging? Is the third baseman staying back? Those are all different options that go on defensively. Now the two base runners, Gavin Treisenberg at second and Chris Doherty at first, with that wheel operating, they didn't extend their lead. So, because many times that wheel runs, you see the runners get a little careless. That did not happen with Brother Rice. So I don't know that we're going to get a pickoff out of this. Watch a throw behind here, though. One ball, one strike. Jason Pollocky. I don't even know if he looked for a sign. I think he knows what he's supposed to do. He's pinch bunting is what he is, not pinch hitting. <laughs> he's pinch bunting. Got a piece of it. Not happy with himself at all. This may be a situation where you let him go again. I would let him go again. You put him up there to bunt, right? Yep. I mean, that's why you put him up there. Young man, get the job done. Execute for us. We got confidence in you. First baseman, Trey Myers, way back behind the bag at first. Hold it back. Oh, that was close. New Trier fans thought they had. I thought Kaplan had painted that corner. Pollocky moves up even more in the box. He's way in front trying to get the barrel in front of the hitting zone to bunt this baseball. Foul ball. He is out. Did not get the job done. Now batting for Brother Rice, center fielder number 14, Ryan Hartz. So what will Ryan Hartz be asked to do? He doubled in a run last time. Hit the ball over the left fielder's head, Ben Toft. He'll be asked to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> One gone with runners at first and second. Max Kaplan battling back here after a pair of errors with these runners on base. Hearts with 15 RBIs, including the one tonight. Really tracked that ball well, but took it the whole way. Mastros at third, Novakovic at short, Olesker at second, Myers at first. That's your infield for New Trier. Middle infield, double play depth, in and over towards second. Looking for an Adam ball. To third, backhanded. Mastros, throw to first, double play out of the inning. How about that to give the Trevians life? First two on with theirs, and that's defense. It's able to finish the inning. Mastros to Myers. Speaking of finished, we are finished with four innings here in Joliet. It's one to nothing, Brother Rice. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> We are one pitch into the fifth inning. 
First pitch a ball to James Novakovic. And one of the reasons why so little time between innings is Cole Van Assen. Yeah, he was actually out on the hill before his team even came close to beating him out of the dugout to get ready to pitch this baseball. He's pretty juiced and in rhythm. His team has a one to nothing lead. Well, back to that Ryan Hartz. He hit a bullet at the third baseman. Then the 5-3 across the diamonds. They were able to, to play over two errors to start that inning. Jam shot foul. That double play started by Graham Mastros. He made two of the best plays that Mike Napoleon and his staff have ever seen from a high school player. And that came in the super sectional. This ball's hit hard. And it's smothered by Natanik. And an infield single for Novakovic will start the top of the fifth. Now back to Mastros. Made a sliding backhand along the third baseline and then threw a BB to first base. And then the, later in the game, a running catch beyond the bag at third base, a throw back to first for a double play. So his double play turned right there, nothing unusual. So now do the Trevians use that momentum right back here in the fifth. Trey Myers struck out the last time against Van Assen. It's at the plate. And lost in that inning with the double plays. Brother Rice inability to get that bunt down, advanced runners. So that one came back to bite him. Myers, the number seven hitter in the order for the Trevians. Showing no indication of any thoughts of bunting. He is one big young man, especially for a sophomore. His job is to drive the baseball. We're gonna hit it to the right side. Gray with the backhand. He'll get the force. No, he will not. It hits the runner in the back. Novakovic hit by that throw from Gray. Novakovic, honestly, if he did it intentionally, it was a smart play because he stayed in his running form and stood up. If he would have gone down into the sliding position, mm -hmm. it probably would have been a 3-6 fielder's choice. I think that's what surprised me because I expected him to go down. Yeah. But he knew that Gray fielded that ball, was going to field that ball right in the baseline. And all of a sudden, we've had three errors here in the past half inning plus. Single, air, first and second, Evan Olesker at the plate. And now, Brother Rice expects a bunt. Gray closing in from first base. Third baseman Nohava hanging back. And Olesker showed us like he was dragging rather than sacrificing. Now he's shown it early. Show it this early where you slash or his job, I think, we get it done. Pickoff thrown into center field. Nobody's going anywhere. See, it's so important when that pickoff's on. Ryan Hart's pounced on that ball. Not only does the infield need to know the pickoff's on, but the outfield needs to know so they are being more aware and ready to back up a base. In the outside corner. You say that because so many times outfielders will react after the bad throw, no matter whether they know a sign or not, rather than anticipating one. Lusker not showing bunt here. Here it comes to third base. Nohava on the run. His throw. He gets him at first base. Olesker can't believe it, but it will advance the runner to second and third. Mike Napoleon's hands over his head as well. Bang, bang, play. Had to be barehanded. It had to be by Nohava, and it was. Really nice pick. The second one of the ball game by Amir Gray. Mike Napoleon still with his hands on his <laughs> head. That was a great bunt by Olesker. And everybody talking about everything. Sean McBride initiated this conference, so it'll be a defensive conference. And he has Henry Wolf to face in the batter's box after everything breaks up. Mike Napoleon has his crew around him. 
Now you might think, okay, do we walk the man to set up the force of bases loaded? But you do not, in this case, walk the nine hitter to bring up Aiden Nolan, the leadoff man, and turn the lineup around. But the other things you're talking about, both offensively and defensively, is what about how are we going to defend a safety squeeze? How are we going to defend a suicide squeeze? Do we have a pitch out in our repertoire? A lot of thinking going around the game situation here. Henry Wolf, a 2-11 hitter, hitting out in the ninth spot in the order. Looking at the defense, the middle is back. Corners will be even with the bag after their approach. Pinch hitter Sam Nigro for the Trevian. Sam Nigro. So is this a pinch bunter? Yeah, he's only hitting 231, so he must believe that they can handle the bat. Mike Napoleon. Looking to swing all the way on that first pitch. Tying run at third, go ahead, run at second for New Trier. They might have called this during the timeout. There were no signs given. Whatever's going on might have already been called. He'll take strike two. Novakovic, the lead at third. Myers at second, 0-2 on Nigro. Try to stretch that corner. One and two, Aiden Nolan on deck. Nigro just gets a piece. You know, Brother Rice with a one run lead, conceding the tying run with the infield back. I was going to say I like that. But just for conversation piece, we have two strikes right now. You have the battle, batter really, you know, in, in, a, in a negative situation. Do you move your infield in at least on the right side right now, you know, to gun down that run? I always just found, conversation. I found these situations the toughest yeah. to manage. Nigro, his job, put the ball yeah. in play. Any which way, make Brother Rice have to field the baseball here. Took a good hack on a good fastball. He yeah. almost got that one by him. Yeah, Van Assen, we know how superlative he's been. You got a pinch hitter coming in, hitting 231, and he's fouled off two consecutive pitches. Advantage gets a little bit more toward the hitter now, the more pitches he has seen. He's able to hold up. Novakovic, the runner at third, he started this inning with a single, and that was the first hit of this game. In fact, now it's the only hit of this game for Nutrier. Van Assen had four hitless innings leading up to that. Nigro's had a quality at bat already here. The seventh pitch he's seen. It's three and two. Top of the order awaits. A lot of noise coming from that new Trier dugout and from their fans. Nigro gets to think he's got to be sitting one, adjust on off speed. But you're the nine hitter in the spot, pitch hitter, you got to think you're in the fastball. Ball four, bases loaded. Boy, mark that one down if the Trevians get a rally. That was one really good at bat by Sam Nigro, the junior. Checking out that infield defense again. They'll play the middle back looking for the double play. Nolan with Van Assen up high on pitch number one. Van Assen was just, just, just cruising. And he's now created a leverage situation for himself and his team. Pitch to Nolan. Big cut, fouled it straight back. So he said this inning started with an infield single from Novakovic. Then on a ground ball, Amir Gray threw the ball to second looking for a force, hit Novakovic in the back. And after a close play and a bunt, 
for the first out. Sam Nigro walks. Nolan was fooled on that pitch. Was able to fight it off and fight it off foul. But if I'm watching his swing, he's been able to drop the barrel down on two consecutive balls down in the zone. So do you go ahead and climb the ladder now and try to get a fastball up around his letters to see if he can get the barrel on top? Brother Rice thought they had strike three. Instead, it's two and two. Yeah. Nolan goes down swinging for out number two. And Asson makes the pitch when he needed it. That ass is basically my fastball against your swing. He won that individual battle. And the game moves to Toft right now with a game on the line. Ben Toft, sophomore. And Asson attacks him for strike one. Secondary lead, oh so important for the trailing runners on second and first for the Trevians to get a good secondary lead and be able to pick up two or three runs on a base hit. Trey Myers at second, Sam Nigro at first. Rolled out to Gray. He'll take it, and that will close out the inning. Bases loaded, one out. Became a strikeout and a ground out. Nutrier leaves three. Brother Rice hanging on to the one to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. School sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination. NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. And we begin the bottom of the fifth inning with Sean Sullivan, the designated hitter hitting out of the ninth spot. One to nothing. Brother Rice, they got their run in the second inning. New Trier's left five on in the last two innings. A Houdini act in that inning. Bases juiced only one out. And Brother Rice gets out of it. Brother Rice, six outs from making it to the farm possible. The farm? The farm. There is a player on their team that owns a farm, Trent Guzik. And if they win a state championship, the goal all year is make it to the farm. They're going to all visit the farm together. The city boys will get out, <laughs> out in the country. <laughs> they have to win a couple more games to make it to the farm. This one is roped to left center field. Lead off man aboard, Sean Sullivan. Gets the fifth inning started. <laughs> Top of the order in Bryce Nevels. A lot of things Nevels can do here. We saw him almost beat out a bunt in his first at bat back in the first inning. Nevels, though, a 352 average, leads this team in so many categories. Batting average, doubles, home runs, runs scored. Played college ball at Western Kentucky Division I. And he's got all the tools. He can run like a deer as well. Sean Mc 
Right, calls him a dynamic athlete, and he takes a healthy cut at that pitch. That strike zone has to look pretty small with Nevels up there because his toes are right there on the box. Right there on top of the plate. Looking to bunt his way on, looked to go first base side, and he got a break there. That ball had some spin to take a foul. He would have run right into a tag of Myers. I think Nevels may have hurt himself a little bit on that first swing. Yeah, the previous swing, and I think that's why he I think that's why he chose to try to bunt there. Yeah. Now he's telling his coach, Sean McBride, I'm fine. He's not going to come out of the state semifinals. But that swing bothered him just a little bit. Don't know if like a you know a tendon, something like that in his wrist area. It'll be interesting to whether that was a charge defensive conference or a health check. Those toes now are almost over the inside line of the batter's box. His knees are almost in the strike zone. A ball and two strikes. Nice pickup by Wolf. Nearly gets the runner at first. Whoa. That was tight. Henry Wolf, cat quick, scooped that ball up on a pitch in the dirt, a backdoor curveball, if you will, and then had the presence of mind to try to go backdoor pickoff. Fouled away, out of play. This will leave the park. And you, you talked about how close Nevels is to the plate. Quite honestly, that can get in the mind of a pitcher. He, he really takes away the inner part of the plate for the pitcher because it'll be a hit by batter. There goes the runner. Fouled away. Sullivan will go back. 2-2, interesting if that steal attempt will draw a throw over here on this pitch, or at least a longer hold. We'll do the same trick. Lifted to left center, toffed over, the left fielder makes the call, makes the catch. So the Trier's been able to keep Bryce Nevels off base tonight. One out to Jackson Atanic. Kaplan, you knew he was going over. He never glanced the first base. Sometimes lefties fall into that trap. Yeah, look home, go to first. Mm -hmm. Look at first, go to home. Yep. If you do that, you get in a pattern. Opposing pitchers, excuse me, opposing base runners will certainly pick that up. Coaches will work out it hard as well. It's a good chance to hit and go right here with a slide step. Not quite a slide, just a short little knee bend there. Amir Gray waits on deck. To the left side and through to left field. Natanik pushes Sullivan to second. That was a strange one because third baseman Graham Mastro, so as you've mentioned, controls some leather. He actually got to that ball, but it went underneath him. He dove and it went underneath him, scooted in the left field, sets up an inning. And I think if you're Brother Rice Crusaders, you would want no one else hmm. except for Amir Gray up to bat in this situation. Senior captain headed to Purdue. Sullivan with the little dance steps out there at second base. Bottom of the fifth. Gray with a healthy pass at that ball. He's back in that box. He's ready to swing it. He said earlier, see it and hit it. Got him right on the hands. Great pitch there by Kaplan. Yeah, he was not, that well, got in lefty against lefty. He was not able to clear his hands to get the barrel out in front. Quality pitch, but you know what? You got to make another quality pitch against a really good hitter right now. It's 
fouled away. Good job by Kaplan. Shortstop James Novakovic was pushing Sullivan back to second, you know, just with a little jab move. Kaplan delivered just as Natanik, or check that Sullivan was going towards the second base bag. Outside corner did not get the call. Good pitch, good take. Because right now, if you are the left-handed pitcher, Kaplan gets a left-handed hitter, but a good one, Amir Gray, you're still ahead. You can try to have him get himself out by chasing a bad ball. Time is called. Well, there's a few players right now pushing their hands across their mm -hmm. face. There's got to be some flying insects impeding their vision right now. One, two pitch to Gray. To left center field. Base hit. Waving in Sullivan. Here's the relay. Not in time. RBI single, Amir Gray, and a 2 to nothing lead for Brother Rice. That's how dangerous he is. He didn't get himself out on the two strike pitch two different times, and he just drove that ball into left center field. He's a run producing machine as he celebrates with his teammates from Thank second base. Sean Sullivan led off with a base hit. Runners second and third as Matanik went to third on the throw. Amir Gray went to second on the throw. The plate now is Randall Naughton. A chance to really spread this one out. New Trier's infield is in tight. 2 nothing, 4 nothing. Two different ball games with those scores. That's the situation we're in now. Nod and a fly out to center, a fly out to left. Gray at second, able to get a lead pretty much as far as the shortstop. Now Novakovic is backed up a little bit. He'll come in some. Nodden waves at it and misses. Big strikeout for Max Kaplan. Kaplan got him way out on the front foot. Nodden tried to do a little bit too much from that. All he had to do was stay back, get some elevation as he did the last two times out with a fly ball. Wolf keeps the ball right there on Gavin Treisenberg. Saves a run against this fine super sophomore. He'll be a highly recruited athlete as his career goes along. Six foot three, 190, sophomore chiseled. Rifles it up the middle. Gray being waved. The throw home. And they will get Amir Gray. Gray can't believe it. But Jason Atanik will come in to score. The second run of the inning, the third run of the game. And Brother Rice will take a three to nothing lead as we go to the top of the sixth. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. You're watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. 
on the first pitch. Mastros high to short right field and Nevels is right there. How about the story of that fifth inning? Nutrier has the bases loaded and they can't get anything out of it. Can't get a one out hit, can't get a two out hit. And on the other side for Brother Rice, they get a couple of hits. Amir Gray drives in a run, then Gavin Treisenberg drives in a run with two outs. Three to nothing looks a, like a lot of runs there for Cole Van Asten to protect. He has been dealing. Grounder out to Treisenberg. He's able to gather himself two outs. Silky smooth sophomore he is. Just ranged far to his left. Kept that glove down. Funnel the ball up to his midsection, threw a P across the diamond. That young man has great baseball instincts. Van Essen came into this inning having thrown 89 pitches. He can max out at 115. He has two outs here in the six. Dylan Mayer is going to help that with a high pop foul. Nodden giving chase. Two rows back. Randall Naughton covered a lot of ground tracking down that fly ball. He thought he had a beat on it. Flag in left center field blowing out. It's been blowing in most of the day slightly. Blowing out to left field just a little bit. We've only seen one home run all day long, somewhat surprising. Strike two to Mayer. Hands over their head, clapping, and the Brother Rice dugout behind the dugout. Nearly got Mayor to bite. Mayor Sr. won the Ron Klein Award, which I'm sure is some kind of leadership award for a senior in honor of former coach Ron Klein. Mayer going to play his baseball at Manhattan University. Foul down the third base left field line. Mayer is grounded out twice to third. Team full of seniors for New Trier. And amazingly, 15 seniors, 15 seniors on this team were scholar athletes for New Trier. And Essen all around the edges of the plate. Count now has reached three and two. A one, two, three inning. Strikeout number eight for Cole Van Assen. Trier up and down in order. Now Brother Rice will get to bat with a three run lead. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Today's game is available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Max Kaplan's first pitch of this inning will be his 84th of the evening. He delivers it to Chris Doherty. Doherty walked and has reached on an air. These two pitchers have done an excellent job. Too many times through the order. Doherty, the number six hitter in the lineup 
for Sean McBride. And this inning will begin with Chris Doherty hit by a pitch. The trend continues. We always seem to get a trend <laughs> yeah. in our state tournaments. And if you're just joining us, the trend is left-handed pitcher, right-handed hitter, hit by pitch. We've seen about six or seven. I think we counted seven of those today in the game in the, for the day. Doherty down at first. Aiden Ojava at the plate. He was pinch hit for the last time as Jason Pollocky was in there to bunt. Pollocky ended up striking out, fouling out on the third strike bunt attempt. Graham Mastros called for it right off the bat at third base. He'll make the catch for the first out. That ball was up there a long time, right between the lights taking full effect and sunset. Ryan Hart's doubled in a run. He doubled in the first run. That came in the second inning for the Crusaders. And then hit into a 5-3 double play. And that was crucial in the fourth. To the left side and through the 5-6 hole. Second hit of the game for Hartz. Big turnaround second for Doherty. He'll hold up right there. Yeah, he barreled that ball like he did in the second inning for a base hit. And remember, he had the hard 5-3 double play. So he's barreled three baseballs on the evening. That one, as you mentioned, 5-6 hole, as he just dropped the barrel, got the head through the zone, hit that ball hard through the left side. It's the eighth hit of the game for Brother Rice. Slow walk to the mound to discuss things with Max Kaplan and the dugout for Nutrier comes out. That's a pretty good indication that Kaplan's night has been completed here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Nutrier fans very appreciative of the effort Max Kaplan gave the Trevians tonight. Really solid effort. Kept them in the game for an awful long time. Three sure. runs, eight hits, and an error for Brother Rice. No runs, one hit, and two errors for Nutrier. Trevor Burns is the new pitcher, 6'3, 195 pound senior. Competing tonight in his 12th game on the hill. He comes in one and one, 23 innings pitched, 17 hits allowed, 28 strikeouts compared to 13 base on balls, and a solid 1.83 earned run average. His job is to keep his team right here. Burns will be faced with runners at first and second. Sean Sullivan awaits. He's the number nine hitter. They'll go back to the top of the order. And Bryce Nevels, Nevels 0 for 3 tonight. But you know that you talk about being due, he is. <laughs> now Burns has a fastball, of course, mid 80s. But according to Mike Napoleon, he's got a slider that he called disappearing. So that's going to be his out pitch. And he'll need it right now in this game situation. Sullivan tonight started that fifth inning with the single. He eventually scored the first of two runs last inning. Now batting for Brother Rice, the designated hitter, number six, Sean Sullivan. Sullivan on the season, a 319 batting average. He's helped that here tonight, one for two. Look 
Clark had put one down, and he went. Brother Rice wants to get back to the top of the order with runners in scoring position. Solomon is going to swing all the way. Now he's down in the count 0 2. Burns comes in out of the pen and does what you're supposed to do pound the zone, strike one, strike two. Now he can use that blow away slider, that put away slider that he so possesses. Just sticking his bat out, and it will drop. Waving all the way is McBride. The throw to the plate. Doherty will slide in with a fourth run on the RBI single from Sean Sullivan. Sullivan did indeed get behind 0-2, but he kept his hands back, and that was a slider that he hit that was down, but he just put the ball in play. Luka get out into left center field. Another run on the board for Brother Rice. More separation. Hartz holds up at second. Big swing from Nevels. A run in the second, two in the fifth, one more here in the sixth. The run that scored on base by hit batsman. That's what started this inning. Nevels behind the bag at first. Who wants it? And the ball will fall. Everybody is able to advance. Infield fly was called, so the runners can advance. But first base umpire had his right hand up, Paul Packerlofer, right away. Now he's staying on the base, hmm. but I definitely saw the right hand come up. Our new right. is not arguing about that at all. Base is loaded on a single by Bryce Nevels. Here's Jackson Atanic. Still only one out. Atanic never saw <laughs> that head was out of there. Amir Gray waits on deck. Mike Napoleon. Appears to be asking. Well, now he's going to talk about the yeah. infield fly, which, first off, Mike probably wish he would have come out here a pitch earlier. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I am not deceived at all by what I saw. I saw the right hand go up with my own eyes, so it's not. I did not manufacture that situation. Now the question is, is it a pitch too late? That's what I, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Now they have the right hand up out. I knew what I saw, but how can that be one pitch later? I have never seen this. I have no. I've never seen this situation. And now Sean McBride wants to discuss it with Paul Packelhofer. Packelhofer. He's saying he's got one finger up like there's one strike. There's a pitch made. The only thing is if Mike Napoleon was calling time during that pitch, but I did not see any umpire grant any time. Hmm. Meanwhile, Bryce Nevels just kind of perched there between first base and the mound, as confused as anyone else. The umpire has to make a decision if he thinks it's a catchable ball, which he did. And then mechanically, if the arm goes up, Quite honestly, the batter's out. He called him out. So the discussion has to be more about a pitch being thrown. Yes. Well, they will call him out. Okay. Huh. And just for my own baseball education, 
I would love to be privy to the explanation there, just so that I could better understand. Well, we will check on that after the game. You're right, for our own personal knowledge. Now, he's, now that's what Sean is saying. So you say it's a strike, there shouldn't be a strike because it wasn't that bat, Sean McBride saying. So if there was a pitch thrown and a strike, the play should have, the previous play should have been over. A little bit of confusion. So they leave a strike on the board. It's 0-1. Botanic. Runners advance to second and third because, as you'd mentioned, you can advance on an infield fly. Meanwhile, Trevor Burns looking to get out of this inning with only one run having crossed the plate. And a full respect to Nantanic. This is the guy Burns wants to get because looming on deck is Amir Gray. Great pitch, and there is that disappearing slider. So Burns gets a strikeout. Brother Rice gets a run. They get two more hits, but most importantly, they have a four-run lead going into the seventh. Three outs away for playing for a state championship. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Late leading off the seventh for Nutrier's James Novakovic. He has the only hit of the game from Nutrier, and that one was a ground ball up the middle that never reached the outfield. Big swing and a miss. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Little looping fly, a ball will find green. Natanic, both of the hits for Nutria are here tonight. First one that gets to the outfield. And that was the 100th pitch of the night for Cole Van Assen. The reason that becomes important is he can start his last batter at 115 pitches. He could finish it there, so if he's gonna get a complete game, he's gotta be efficient right now. That, of course, was Novakovic with the hit, Natanic chasing the ball down. Trey Myers. Van Essen hits the outside corner. And of course, they have those pitch counts in the Brother Rice dugout. That's why a couple of folks playing catch down in the Rice bullpen. Paul Van Essen, eight strikeouts tonight. He's allowed two hits. Myers reached on a fielder's choice in an error. To third, the backhand going a long way to first. Aiden Ahava to Amir Gray. Novakovic advances to the second. His run is meaningless right now. The outs are what matter, and that is out number one. That's when Hovind knew that it was meaningless to get the lead runner at second. He took the sure out. Took his time, measured the throw, squared his back foot. Good, solid, fundamental play. Evan Olesker will look to keep this inning alive for the Trevians from New Trier. Yeah. 
Goes after that first pitch. Three walks tonight for Van Essen. Eight strikeouts, he's allowed two hits. Nodden's able to keep it right there in front of him. Lesker struck out looking. He's thrown out on the bunt attempt. Lesker's job is to get on base any which way possible, no matter what it takes to turn that lineup over. He'll try Nahava. Two outs. And all the Brother Rice fans coming to their feet. Henry Wolf will walk to the plate. Brother Rice has been in the state championship baseball game twice in its history. Once in 1976 when they won it all and again in 1981. Asking for the appeal, did not go. Van Essen steps on and off the rubber. He looks just as strong as he did he in the early innings. Three and oh, now he doesn't want to get to where we were in our first semifinal game and put a couple guys on base to get that tying run at the plate in the seventh inning. Leadoff hitter Aiden Nolan is next if they get to him. Taking all the way is Wolf. Thought he might take two, but Mike Napoleon gave him the sign. Go ahead and hit. A little cat and mouse here with Wolf and Cole Van Assen. Right on the inside corner, three and two. <laughs> on three and two. Runner goes down to first, first and second. The tying run is on deck. And Asson getting close to that pitch number. Yeah, I think I'm guessing this could be a, would be the last hitter no matter what. Yeah, he could finish his batter. This would be it. He'd rather finish the game himself. Running at first base for a new career, number five, Jackson McCary. Jackson McCary, the courtesy runner at first base. Ryan Hartz in center field, very deep as well. He should be. No doubles right now for this tying run at the plate. Aiden Nolan 0 for 3 tonight with a pair of strikeouts. Leadoff batter in this new Trier lineup. Big swing, no contact. No balls, two strikes. The 0-2. Nolan would not fight. Drama builds. That's it. Cole Van Essen's ninth strikeout of the night. 
finishes off a two-hit shutout in the Class 4A semifinals. And Brother Rice will head to the championship game. Their opponent will be the Edwardsville Tigers, the defending 4A champs. It will be a rematch of last year's semifinal game between those two teams. Just a completely dominating performance on the hill by Cole Van Ass and everything that he we thought he might be, he produced at a big stage here tonight and just basically dominated the game from 60 feet away. So our field is set for tomorrow's action. This is what it will look like. Starting at nine o'clock, our third place game in 3A will match Effingham and Sycamore. That'll be followed by the 3A championship. Nazareth Academy looking to go back to back in 3A and they will take on Rays Lake Central. We shift to three o'clock in the afternoon. That's when the third place game with Nutrier facing York and our 4A championship will follow that one. Edwardsville and Brother Rice as Edwardsville looks to go back to back. But here in this one, Brother Rice with a run in the second, two in the fifth, one in the sixth, they win it. To the championship game go the Crusaders. Make sure you join us tomorrow. We begin at 9 a.m. For Mark Lindo, for Bill Rush, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Thanks for joining us here on a Friday. We'll see you on Championship Saturday.